Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. When we mention Saudi Arabia, two words always pop out. Oil and Muslim. As the world's largest exporter of petroleum, Saudi Arabia is playing a critical role in both the regional and global economy. In recent years, the Saudi Vision 2030 has also attracted a lot of global attention. So what is the general business environment and political system in Saudi Arabia? Can we apply Hofstad's cultural framework to analyze its business culture? Do their companies obtain some unique organizational cultures or business etiquettes? In this video, I will discuss these topics with you. Section 1. General Business Environment Saudi Arabia, officially the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, is a country on the Arabian Peninsula in Western Asia. It has a land area of about 2,150,000 square kilometers, making it the largest country in the Arabian Peninsula and the 12th largest country in the world. The country is home to the Islamic holy cities of Mecca and Medina. The capital city is Riyadh. The official language of Saudi Arabia is Arabic. Saudi Arabia has the world's second largest proven petroleum reserves and sixth largest proved natural gas reserves. With the help of those abundant natural resources, the economy of Saudi Arabia is the largest of the Arab states and the 18th largest in the world. In 2021, its GDP per capita is $23,586. As a country with a very high human development index, Saudi Arabia offers a tuition-free university education, no personal income tax, and a free universal health care system. On the Corruption Perception Index, 2021, Saudi Arabia ranks 52nd out of 180 countries, receiving a score of 53. The scale ranges from zero, highly corrupt, to 100, very clean. For example, Denmark, Finland, and New Zealand equally rank number one with a score of 88. South Sudan ranks 180 with a score of 11. Section 2. Unique Political System. The politics of Saudi Arabia takes place in the context of an authoritarian absolute monarchy along Islamist lines, where the king is both the head of state and government. Decisions are, to a large extent, made based on consultation among the senior princes of the royal family, the Al Saud, and the religious establishment. The royal family's vast numbers allow it to hold most of the kingdom's important posts and to have an involvement and presence of all levels of government. The number of princes is estimated to be over 7,000, with the most power and influence being wielded by the 200 or so male descendants of King Abdulaziz. Political participation outside the royal family is limited. Section 3. Hofstad Scores. As we covered in the previous video, Hofstad's cultural framework is one of the most widely used tools to analyze a country's culture. Therefore, let's check Saudi scores in Hofstad's six-dimension cultural framework. Please keep in mind Hofstad's score on each dimension is on a scale from 0 to 100. Dimension 1. Power Distance. Power distance refers to how openly a society or culture either accepts or rejects differences between people, for instance, hierarchies in the workplace, in politics, and so on. Saudi Arabia scores 72 on this dimension which means that people accept a hierarchical order in which everybody has a place and needs no further justification. To Saudi Arabians, subordinates expect to be told what to do, and the ideal boss is a benevolent autocrat. Dimension 2. Individualism. The individualism versus collectivism dimension considers the degree to which societies are integrated into groups as well as their perceived obligations and dependence on groups. Saudi Arabia, with a score of 48 is considered a slightly collectivistic society. Loyalty in a collectivist culture is paramount and overrides most other societal rules and regulations. Saudi society fosters strong relationships where everyone takes responsibility for fellow members of their group. Dimension 3. Masculinity. The masculinity versus femininity dimension is also referred to as tough versus tender, and it considers the preference of society for achievement, behavior, attitude towards gender equality, and more. According to the most recent report from Hofstad Insight, Saudi Arabia scores 43 on this dimension. Traditionally, Saudi women's societal roles are heavily impacted by Islamic and local traditions. For example, until June 2018, women were not allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia. However, in recent years, there are an increasing number of Saudi women getting engaged in business and politics as part of the Crown Prince's agenda for publicity. Dimension 4. Uncertainty Avoidance. The uncertainty avoidance dimension considers the extent to which uncertainty and ambiguity are tolerated. 
This dimension also considers how unknown situations and unexpected events are dealt with. Saudi Arabia scores 64 on this dimension and thus has a preference for avoiding uncertainty. To minimize or reduce uncertainty, strict rules, laws, policies, and regulations are adopted and implemented. As a result of these high uncertainty avoidance characteristics, Saudi culture is fundamentally traditional and conservative. Dimension 5, Long-Term Orientation. The long-term orientation versus short-term orientation dimension considers the extent to which society views its time horizon. Long-term orientation emphasizes perseverance and growth. In contrast, short-term orientation focuses on the near future by delivering short-term success and emphasizing the present. The normative nature of Saudi Arabian society can be seen in its low score of 27 on this dimension. People in such societies exhibit a relatively small propensity to save for the future and a focus on achieving immediate gratification. Dimension 6, Indulgence. Indulgence indicates that society allows relatively free gratification related to having fun in life. Conversely, restraint indicates that society suppresses gratification of needs and regulates it through social norms. Saudi Arabia, with a low score of 14 on this dimension, can be said to be a restrained society. Saudi Arabia is a very conservative, Islamic country. Because of this, the kingdom has always followed the Islamic laws very strictly and enforced them on their people. For example, alcohol is completely banned in Saudi Arabia. Section 4. Organizational Culture and Business Etiquette. Here, I would like to discuss Saudi organizational culture and business etiquette from the following perspectives. 1. Saudi working week is from Sunday to Thursday, with the weekend falling on Friday and Saturday instead of Saturday and Sunday. Friday is a very important day for Muslims, because it is the day that Muslims gather together to pray in congregation. 2. Only use your right hand for shaking hands or for handing anything. It's considered rude to use the left hand in Islam. 3. Business visitors are expected to wear a conservative and formal dress. Men should wear suits and ties. Women should wear suits to leave as little flesh as possible. Skirts that are well below the knee to ankle length are the best skirts to wear in a business meeting. 4. Business is hierarchical based on age and position. Decisions are made by the highest ranking person. Respect should be shown to the most senior person at all times. Elders will always be shown heightened respect even if they are in a lower position within the company. 5. For meetings, it is important to show up on time. People may even arrive early if they are trying to please the person that they are meeting. However, be aware that you may be kept waiting. 6. Professional titles such as doctor or usted should be used, followed by the person's first name. 7. The proceedings of Saudi meetings sometimes are not very structured. There is rarely a formal agenda or designated chairperson. For example, your Saudi contact may return to a conversation they were having with someone else before your meeting and expect you to wait in the room. 8. Meetings will be paused if they interrupt prayer time. Therefore, it is usually best to make appointments in the morning before the midday prayer or after lunch. 9. There is generally a lack of urgency in business dealings. Decisions are made slowly and can also be overturned easily. Avoid showing frustration or impatience at the process. 10. The person asking the most questions is not always the person with the most responsibility. Try to speak directly to the person with the most decision-making power to save time. 11. During negotiations, it is better to provide concrete evidence to support your claims and projections. Saudis are more convinced by figures and calculations that can prove the value of a business venture. 12. Personal relationships play a large role in Saudi business culture. Saudis prefer to work with those they know. Face-to-face -face meetings are ideal. 13. People may agree on contracts and adhere to them based on trust. Saudis generally keep word-of-mouth promises, so be sure you understand what they mean. However, it is still important to secure matters with written contracts. 14. Be prepared to compromise a little in the interest of building a long-term business relationship. 15. Gift-giving in Saudi Arabia is appreciated but not necessary. Bringing something small as a thank you is common. Gifts are seen as rather personal and often exchanged between close friends. Remember to not open the gift when received. All right, that's all for today's topic. So, what do you think about the business culture of Saudi Arabia? Do you have any related experience or story willing to share? 
Please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.